Move Along, an all-inclusive organization based in Syracuse, took to the waters in the Oswego Canal to share how they provide recreational and athletic means for all. Move Along was founded in 2009. I was injured from a fall from a balcony in 2005 and found very quickly that there wasn't a lot of recreational and adaptive athletic opportunity for individuals with limitations physically. You see a lot of people that do have an injury or face a trauma or a change in life just that may not be physically and then you know their, their ability to reintegrate becomes very, very stagnant or challenging. So Move Along was founded on the opportunity that we create these recreational and athletic means for the individual to get out and participate live a healthier and uh, better quality of life and we strive to uh, enable people to do that every day with several of our programs. Wow. I love to like kayaking with my sister. I like nature. Melissa, stay right here. You can't go by those concrete blocks, okay? Adaptive paddling is uh, an all-inclusive paddle where we take participants out kayaking and the adaptive piece is that we can adapt our equipment for someone that might have a mobility issue. If they have perhaps, you know, they're unstable because they don't have great balance, you know, we can add equipment to the kayak to make it adaptive. But it is all inclusive, so we want everyone to be able to participate, whether they have a physical disability or an intellectual disability, everyone is invited to participate. This is, this is my mom and Kirby. This is the one so Kirby's staying in the shade right now. <laughs> I definitely think that there's a need for organizations like Move Along. People with special needs tend to be grouped as one, and so therefore um, the bar isn't raised high. It's kind of at the lower end or medium. So, for example, with this particular program, she has her independence. You know, it's not like everyone's hovering around her. As her mother, I'm able to say, okay, Jen's in charge now for Move Along. You listen to everything she says, she's in charge. I have to pass the baton. And that's what us parents have to do. I know you have people in the program that don't have someone as their guardian and they can manage their own affairs. But for me, to see that she can just go and do it under someone else's direction, that's a move towards independence. Go ahead, Melissa, I'm gonna come up right behind you. We offer the inclusive sports program where we go into the schools and basically take over the gym period for the day. And we introduce the students to youth wheelchair basketball, sled hockey, and adaptive cycling. We also run our adaptive paddling program, our youth and adult wheelchair basketball program, sled hockey, ice sled hockey. And we're adding more all the time. So, I mean, you know, we have a couple proposals on the table for other programming, but there's a process for an individual in the community that may want to introduce a program to us now as we've grown as a team. We put a process in place so that, you know, we have individuals, because we're, we're very lean on staff, based on grant funding and philanthropy and us doing fundraisers, um, it only enables us so much staffing. So uh, we could use key centers of influence in the community that want to come on and help us build a program and maybe partner with us to lead some of that as well um, under the management of uh, Jennifer that's going to be the future of how we can get bigger and better. You're going to grab onto the bar. Yeah. And you're worried about my leg. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Two hands on the bar. That'll hold all your weight. Right? Well, I think that the biggest thing that I found uh, when I got injured, not only with, you know, uh, I feel like I have an outgoing personality, so it may be easier for me to overcome some type of challenge such as this, whereas when an individual that may not have that inner ability to possibly come from a world where they were a leader in a business or had founded their own business, they're lost for the resources to find reintegration. All right, Rick, nice and easy when you come off this launch, okay? Okay. So without us creating this platform and enabling someone to get out for the first time to paddle, even though they've been scared to do it for 10 years, and then they come out and then they realize that freedom just changed my life, and now I can move to the next change that I want. You know, but in reality, I've, I've met with so many individuals that a parent's afraid to bring a child out to do this because they, already, they were already injured through trauma, but now they're afraid to let them do anything. 
We need to break that down, and we're trying to break that down. It's kind of like a, 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 a springboard or a launching pad. These little programs we create are opportunities for re reintegration. Then the individual can think about going back to work. They can think about developing their social network bigger because they're not as scared or anxious or, or fearful that they're not going to be accepted. This platform we create allows all of that to occur on a bigger evolution each time someone new comes out. Well, if you battle it on its side, there you go. The reception of our programs in the disabled community is amazing. Uh, what we do is so rewarding, not only for us, but for our participants. It's unbelievably empowering. Uh, we are putting equipment uh, in the hands of children and adults that would not otherwise have the opportunity to use that equipment. From cycles to kayaks, uh, hand cycles, foot powered cycles, it is amazing when you see uh, an individual be able to uh, become physically active again. Uh, their, their hope, their quality of life is really impacted and improved and they are extremely grateful for our services. Uh, we receive thank you emails all the time about, uh, you know, thank you for what you do, thank you for all that you've done for us. You know, this organization is amazing, so we are received really well, and uh, I think overall the disabled community as well as uh, the non-disabled community appreciates and understands the importance of what we do. Yeah, so I mean, we appreciate you guys being here today, providing us an opportunity to uh, market ourselves and let people know about the great things that we do. Uh, we are continually looking to collaborate with other agencies that want to provide uh, resources for individuals with both physical and cognitive disabilities in our community. The resources we provide are obviously recreational and athletically, but you know, it costs a lot of money to provide what we provide. That's why a lot of the individuals we serve can't have their own equipment. We want to create collaborations and work with centers of influence in our community that have the financial means to help us grow and to feel the reward that we get by working with families that need us. So Melissa, how was kayaking today? It's great. Also planting those seeds that, God forbid, uh, an individual ever sustains an injury. For them to know, you know, if anything ever happens to them or a family member, whether they become ill or have some sort of tra tragic accident, that there are opportunities for them to adapt and overcome. So. Whenever I'm in the schools, that's what I'm always saying to the kids is no matter what happens to you, you know, tomorrow or a year from now, you can adapt and overcome. You can, you know, share what you've learned today with your friends or family or even for yourself. You know, you don't have to lose hope. There's always opportunities out there for you to stay engaged.